G'day, welcome back to the channel. Got a bit to talk about today because <laughs> regulations and stuff. Let's get started. Let's talk about CBOs and rules and so forth. Now, about a year ago, I put this video up. And in that video, I warned people that this whole CBO thing was, was a clever ruse by the FAA. It was a clever way of sidestepping the process, a legal required, legally required process to introduce new regulations. When the FAA wants to introduce a new regulation, they've got to put out an NPRM, a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. And then that gives the people who are going to be affected an opportunity to respond and say, we like this, we don't like this, we think you should change that. And that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for the FAA. We saw with the Remote ID NPRM over 60,000 responses to the consultation. It's a lot of work for people that would rather be drinking coffee and eating donuts. So what did they do? They probably said, we don't want to do this again. Let's find an easier way. Let's sidestep our, our obligations to consult. And that's what they've done. That's why these CBOs exist. And I said in the video that the FAA is using this as a backdoor to more easily change regulation without challenge. And unfortunately, I watched this video yesterday, which is the town hall meeting of the FPV Freedom Coalition. And I'm going to let it run a bit. I'm going to play a bit of this because I want you to see what has happened. What has happened. I, I predicted this and this is what happened. We've just received a word today from the FAA and I'm going to, I'm going to at this point leave names out of it. But, um, so, uh, we were requested to modify our safety guidelines to take into account specifically, uh, night flying, FPV racing, and, and that's, and, it. that's, and it. that's, that's it. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you know, the guidelines that were just approved a few months ago. Yeah. So, you know, when we became a CBO and all that got approved by them. So now they're coming back and saying, you need to change this, this, and this, and originally didn't give us, you know, specifics on exactly what needed to be changed. So, but, but cited obviously the advisory circular for information. So we made some modifications and, um, as we have talked about before, the FPVFC believes in, uh, really focusing on the judgment of the operator in terms of what they choose to do. Uh, we can recommend certain things, but we don't want to mandate things that actually aren't regulations. And here comes the key point is that the FAA continues to go down a path of regulating via advisory circular, as opposed to going through the approved process of their, their creating their own a, rulemaking process. Yes. Yep. The government's rulemaking process. It's not just the FAA. This is a government wide process of doing a notice for proposed, proposed rulemaking to modify existing regulations, get feedback from the community, get feedback from stakeholders, which, uh, you know, admittedly CBOs are, and, and make changes that way. So there we go. The FAA has basically said to the FPV Freedom Coalition, yes, we accepted your rules and we signed you up as a CBO, but now we're gonna make you change your rules. And we're not going to go to any consultation. You have to change your rules. And I dare say there's, a, there's an implied threat. If you don't, then we may remove your CBO status. This is what I warned about. And it's actually happening. Um, again, I mean, I, I've lost track of the number of times I've said, don't do this or this will happen. And people have done that. And this has happened. I'm not saying I'm a genius. I'm not, I'm not gifted in any way. I've just been on the planet for 70 years now. And I have done a lot of work dealing with bureaucracies, regulators, politicians, bureaucrats, and I know how they work. I, I understand the mechanisms by which they make decisions. I understand what they consider to be important and unimportant, and I understand how they use the system to their best advantage. So I could see this coming like a freight train in a tunnel, honestly. The, the light was blinding me, and I tried to help people understand this, but people generally just don't listen and we get the same mistakes being repeated time and time again. I just wish people would listen because there's a the future of a hobby is at stake here. It's not nothing to do with me, it's nothing to do with you know in but it's the hobby. The whole damn hobby is is the future of that whole damn hobby is at stake right now. Another thing I noticed while watching the or looking at the FPV Freedom Coalition's Discord. Now the the, the new video is out from FPV Freedom Coalition 
promoting the lifting the, the registration threshold from 250 grams to one kilo. And they are going to send a memo, they're sending a document off to the, you know, for the reauthorization bill, all that sort of stuff. Go and watch the video. I'll link to it in the description so you can go and see for yourself. There's a few notables in there. You know, we've got um, MadsTech, Ian from MadsTech. We've got Joshua Bardwell, all reading from the script, um, telling you go and do this. And I've already done my video on that. They asked me to do one. I said, I've done a video. Go use that. No, no, no. We want you to do from the script. And I won't read from the script because the, these people, you know, flight test, FPV Freedom Coalition, they're still saying, copy and paste our memo. And I'm saying, no. And if you want proof as to why that's a bad idea, go onto the FPV Freedom Coalition Discord, because some of the people who have contacted their politician have got form letter replies, you know, copy and paste replies. And you can see the disappointment. Did they even read my letter? Did, you know, that's, that's what happens when you copy and paste something and send it to someone. It tells the recipient, I don't care enough to even put pen to paper. I, I'm just going to fob you off with a copy and paste. So imagine how the politician feels when they get these copy and paste emails from people. These people don't care enough about what they're saying to even put their own words to, in, in, into effect here. They're just copying and pasting it. They don't care. And that's the, we don't want to send that message. We want to send the message that I'm so passionate and, and I care about this so much that I have taken time out of my valuable day to put into my own words what I feel about this. But they're still peddling this copy and paste. Ah, oh, it's doomed to failure. Now, my predictions so far and this whole thing, including the CBA thing, pretty accurate. I'm predicting this, this lift the, raise the limit from 250 to one kilo. I'm sadly predicting it will fail for a couple of reasons. First reason is copy and paste. Don't do it, for goodness sake. The other one is we've already you know, worked it out. We've already seen through the, the mist. This is nothing to do with safety. Now, the thrust of the argument for lifting 251 kg is safety, you know, but that's not why um, they won't do it. It's security. They're, pushing, they're on the security bandwagon now. You know, well, it's not about safety anymore. It's about security. And there's nothing in the document that they plan to send out to the, you know, the, the Congress or whatever. There's nothing in there about security. It's all about safety. The safety doesn't matter anymore because they know that narrative has failed. So it's security now. They haven't addressed the security concerns. The, co the politicians are, have been told, oh, these drones are a security threat. They'll look at that document and go, well, I see nothing here that mitigates security. So we must keep it at 250 grams. Oh. Um, I don't know. I, I pull, if I had hair, I'd pull it out, honestly. Honestly, there was something this morning I pulled it out already. So I don't, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Um, we are, and the thing is, we're such a small community. I looked at that video, it's been up for, for a couple of days now, and it had like uh, uh, tens of views this morning. Tens of views, we're not reaching anybody with that. Nobody's watching that video. I'm, I've done my video trying to reach as many people as possible. Um, flight test has done their video. I haven't checked to see how many people have seen that yet, but that was only a relatively small number, nothing like the two million plus subscribers they've got. And the AMA said they're on board, but I haven't seen a video from them. I haven't seen a video from them promoting this. They're on board, but they're not doing anything. And the reauthorization is coming up real soon. Got to get these things out very quickly. So yeah, I'm wholly disappointed in the way this campaign's being waged. It's, it's it, it, and I have insight. I have a track record of being right, but nobody's listening. They don't care. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I really don't know. I think the future of the hobby is in our hands. We can't rely on organizations to do it. And the best intentions like FTCA and um, uh, FPV Freedom Coalition, all the best intentions in the world, if you don't do it properly, you're wasting your time and you're losing that opportunity to make the first impression that counts. If you do that poorly, then you, know, you only get one chance to make a first impression. <sighs> So it's up to us now, up to us. We can't rely on these groups that try, hard as, try as hard as they may. They're not doing it right. So we, the individuals, have to take this burden of protecting the hobby on board. And, and it is a, a case of protecting it. Don't underestimate how much imperiled this hobby is. In Canada, you cannot, nobody can fly a drone or an RC model aircraft weighing more than 250 grams if they're under 14 without immediate adult supervision of somebody who's already got the, the passed the exam. So, so kids are out. Kids, I'm sorry, kids, you're out. Unless mum or dad wants to take the exam and get the thing and supervise you every minute of the day, you, you're, you're playing with toys. You're not flying larger models, you know, the models that are more fun in a lot of cases. And in the UK, if you want to own a drone or a model aircraft that weighs more than 250 grams, you've got to be 18 because you have to have an operator number. And you, you, you can't get that until you're 18. So the kids are just being pushed out. And I just, I, 
I really get fuming when I see the FAA and the CAA in the UK saying, oh, we're supporting STEM programs, you know, we want kids into this hobby. How hypocritical is that? But well, we're supporting kids, but we won't let them fly without supervision or, or until they're 18. <laughs> oh no. So that's why we need to take responsibility for this. Can't rely on anybody but ourselves. And I'll have some ideas as to how I think we can do that coming up pretty shortly. I'm, I'm, I'm a solutions guy. I, I mean, I see a problem, I come up with hopefully solutions to that. Just don't sit here and whinge and grizzle and moan. I like to come up with solutions. And um, so stay tuned for those videos. Um, hopefully they'll be a little bit more upbeat than this one, which is really a rant. But just to remind you why we fly, here's a bit of footage I took the other day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!